The first question that people ask me is, is diabetes a disease or is it a disorder? What do you think is the answer? Well, I'll tell you the answer. If diabetes is not controlled, then it starts biting you, literally. It can affect your eyes, kidneys, heart, feet. In fact, we say from the head to the toe can be affected by diabetes. Type 1 diabetes. This occurs in children. It's an acute onset. Children have very high blood sugars. And the only treatment for such children who have this type of type 1 diabetes type 2 diabetes. In India, it's estimated that more than 75 million people have type 2 diabetes. Now, why do we get type 2 diabetes? I find the simplest way to teach people about diet is to learn about the plate concept that you're seeing here. In the healthy plate concept, what do you do? You have the same thali, no doubt. But now you see 50% of that thali is filled with healthy, green, leafy vegetables. Now, you got the other half. In that half, divide it into two quarters. And one quarter, as you can see here, is reserved for... When you have such a high carbohydrate load, it's very difficult to prevent diabetes and it's also very difficult to control diabetes. So people all the time talk about, oh, I'll reduce my carbohydrate, my diabetes will go away. For how long will reduce your carbohydrate? Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. V. Mohan, and I'll be speaking in a series of videos, all that you need to know about diabetes. The first question that people ask me is, is diabetes a disease or is it a disorder? What do you think is the answer? Well, I'll tell you the answer. It can either be a disorder or it can be a disease, and it's left to you to decide how you want to make diabetes. If you just have a little bit of high sugar in your blood and this is reversible or it can be controlled, it's not going to do any harm to you at all. Then why call it a disease? It's just a simple disorder. And your whole life, you can just keep diabetes as just like your friend and it's just a simple disorder and it's not going to affect you in any way. But diabetes is like a tiger. Now, what's the comparison between diabetes and a tiger, you may ask? As long as the tiger is in the cage, like this, it is safe. You can go and stand near it. You can say hi to it, and it doesn't affect you. But what will happen if you release the cage and the tiger comes charging at you like this? It's a completely different tiger, isn't it? Diabetes is like that. As long as you keep it under control, you really don't have to worry about it and you don't even have to call it as a disease. It's a simple disorder. But if you don't look after diabetes, if diabetes is not controlled, then it starts biting you, literally. It can affect your eyes, kidneys, heart, feet. In fact, we say from the head to the toe, including the head and the toe, can be affected by diabetes. So ladies and gentlemen, the choice is yours. Do you want to treat diabetes like a simple disorder, which may even be completely reversible? You can even remove it from your system. Or are you going to allow this to grow like a cancer inside your body until ultimately all the organs get affected? Whenever we use the word diabetes, people think it is one disease. It's not so. Diabetes is of different types and each type of diabetes is diagnosed differently, the symptoms are different and the treatment is also different. So we cannot mix up two types of diabetes because the approach to it 
is completely different. For example, let me give you just two examples. One is a type of diabetes called as type 1 diabetes. This occurs in children. It's an acute onset. Children have very high blood sugars. And the only treatment for such children who have this type of type 1 diabetes is insulin. In fact, you'll be surprised to know that insulin itself was discovered only 100 years ago. And before that, if any child in the world had type 1 diabetes, they simply died within two months, three months, maximum one year. Insulin changed all that and gave a new life to children with type 1 diabetes. Today, children with type 1 diabetes can live even up to 80, 90 years. My oldest patient is almost 90 years old and had got it when that person was a child. But if we don't qualify which type of diabetes we are talking about, we are invariably talking about the second type of diabetes, which is called as type 2 diabetes. In fact, type 2 diabetes is almost 90-95% of all the types of diabetes that we see in the world. So if you don't qualify when you talk about diabetes, we are talking about type 2 diabetes. In India, it's estimated that more than 75 million people have type 2 diabetes. Now, why do we get type 2 diabetes? Of course, the genetic factor is very important. If your father, mother or both had diabetes, your risk of getting type 2 diabetes is very high. But that's only about 40% of the causes. 60% of the reason why you get type 2 diabetes is lifestyle related factors. And in lifestyle, one of the most important is diet. What you eat, you can see here a very healthy diet shown as well as a very unhealthy diet. The unhealthy diet that you see here is what is going to produce diabetes for you. Look at this one. Physical active person and a totally physically inactive person. We know that physical inactivity or sedentary behavior is another very important cause of type 2 diabetes. In this video, I'm going to spend time on diet, what you can eat, what you should try to limit, and what perhaps you can avoid completely. There's nothing which is totally forbidden, but better to avoid certain dietary items. And very often people ask me, what are the Indian diets which are good? And what are the Indian diets which are not so good? Now, one of the problems with any Indian diet, whether you're in North India, South India, East India, West India, Central India, or the Northeast of India, it really doesn't matter. The main problem in the Indian diet vis-a-vis -vis diabetes, type 2 diabetes, is the carbohydrate content. We all eat too much of carbohydrate, whether it is dosa and idli in the South, or chapati or puri in the north, it really doesn't matter. It's how much you eat which is very important. They are all carbohydrate. So the first principle that you must know in an Indian diet is portion sizes and what you should take. And for that I find so many books are there, so many articles have been written. But I find the simplest way to teach people about diet is to learn about the plate concept that you are seeing here. What you can see here is a thali or a plate. And the way we normally eat is shown here, where you fill the plate with a lot of rice, like a mountain of rice, as we call it. And then we have in South India, for example, we'll have rice and sambar, then rice and rasam, then rice and curd, and then some other rice item for as dessert also. So we are eating rice, rice, rice all the time. So it turns out that 70 to 75% of our entire diet comes from carbohydrate. Now, When you have such a high carbohydrate load, it's very difficult to prevent diabetes and it's also very difficult to control diabetes. So the first thing that you should do is to follow the healthy plate concept which I have shown here. In the healthy plate concept, what do you do? You have the same tali, no doubt, but now you see 50% of that tali is filled with healthy, green, leafy vegetables. So vegetables form half of your plate. Now you got the other half. 
in that half divided into two quarters and one quarter as you can see here is reserved for protein and that is what Indians don't take particularly in South India the protein intake and therefore the fiber intake is very low now where do you get the protein from I would prefer the protein to come from vegetable sources like Bengal gram, green gram, black gram, rajma, soya, mushroom, all these uh, constitute very good vegetable protein. They are very healthy, they don't have any fat, they give you a lot of nutrients and they give you a lot of fiber. So vegetable protein is superior to animal protein and there is a lot of data to support this. However, for a staunch non-vegetarian, if they come and tell me, doc, you are telling me not to eat sugar. Now you are telling me to give up non-veg oil. This is too much. I can't, it's not worth being a diabetic and not worth living, you know. That's what they say, They're such strict non-vegetarians. So it's not that non-veg should not be taken. I said vegetable protein is better than non-vegetarian protein. I am sticking to that. But if you want to take non-veg protein, you can take fish or chicken. Try to avoid red meat. White of the egg is very good. You may say, why not the yellow? Yellow is also good. It gives you protein, but yellow contains cholesterol. One egg contains 300 milligram of cholesterol. That's your total limit for the whole day. So if you have taken that one egg, you cannot take cholesterol in any other form. Whereas if you take the egg white, there's zero cholesterol. It gives you a lot of protein. So you can have your fat in other forms. Okay. So if you're taking one egg, then that's fine. You have the egg white and the yellow. But the advantage of taking egg white is that you can have four egg whites or five egg whites because there's zero cholesterol and you're increasing your protein intake. So that second quarter of the plate is reserved for protein. Now you've got the last quarter. That is where your carbohydrate should come in. Now there is no need just because you live in the south and you're rice eating to change to chapati. That used to be the old teaching in my father's days where you know you have rice change it to chapati then you won't eat much in the north oh you like chapati so you stop that and take rice you know what happens actually when you tell them to eat chapati they'll eat eight chapatis thinking oh chapati only no i'm not taking rice because all the while in his mind he's thinking i'm not taking rice i'm not taking rice i'm not taking rice so they overeat the chapati and finally the sugar goes up if they're taking the rice they'll be more careful and so uh, the opposite in the north as well so continue what you like Continue what you are used to, but reserve only quarter of the plate for that rice or that chapati or any other carbohydrate that you take. If you do this, this becomes a healthy plate. Of course, you can add one or two more things. You have a bowl of curd, for example. There is probiotics in it. If you have a glass of milk, then it gives you a lot of calcium and protein. So these are things which you can add on. But this plate principle, the healthy plate principle, Every person with diabetes should know. Now people also more recently have started asking me, instead of rice, can I white rice, can I take brown rice? We have done a lot of research on this, at least 8-10 papers have published on this. Brown rice is very good. There is no doubt that brown rice is healthier, it has more B-complex, it has more fibre. The sugar doesn't go up that much. The glycemic index or the propensity to increase the sugar is much less if you take brown rice. All that is true. But people hate it. When they see the brown rice, they say, ah, I can't take this. It smells. It doesn't cook properly. I have problem digesting it. It doesn't stay in the shop for long. It gets rancid. It's costly. It's not available. Why should I be taking this? Well, if you have access to brown rice and you like it, take it. Otherwise, cut down the white rice and you can still enjoy the rice that you want to take. There's no need to change over. What about millets? Of course, millets are very good. In fact, in the ancient days, people used to eat millets and they're very, very healthy. No doubt about it. Millets are making a comeback. The government is also promoting millets in a big way. But here is a twist in the tale. We did an analysis of all the millets available in the market. We went and picked up all the millets and did glycemic index testing on them and we found that the millets also increase the sugar. Why? Because the millets are also polished. Now how did you get white rice? The brown rice is polished, polished, polished and made into white rice, you are removing all the nutrients. Same thing unfortunately is happening with the millets. So if you are able to get unpolished or raw millets as we used to get in our grandfather's time, then take it. 
But if you just buy millets because they are millets and they are polished, they are just like rice. There is no advantage. And they are, remember, they are also carbohydrate. So, if you like to change to millets, you do that. But for the sake of diabetes, don't change anything. Continue the same thing that you are taking. What about fruits? Again, you can classify fruits into different types. There are fruits which have a high glycemic index. The moment you eat the fruit, sugar shoots up. There are fruits which you take, there is only a gentle increase in the sugar. Low glycemic index or medium glycemic index. Use those fruits. For example, apple, guava, papaya, orange, watermelon. These are fruits with not such a high glycemic index and therefore you can take them. But if you take banana or if you take mangoes, unfortunately mangoes so popular, especially in the season, and I've got a full video explaining when to eat mango, how to eat mango, and why a person with diabetes can take mango. But you can't just take as much mango as you want. Your sugar is definitely going to go up. And therefore, fruits are good. For people without diabetes, you can take three, four, five fruits a day. People with diabetes, take one fruit a day. If your sugar is very well controlled, probably make it two. But here's a catch again. Don't take it as fruit juice. The moment you take it as fruit juice, your sugar will go up. Because the amount of fruit going in will go up. And there is no fiber. When you just drink it, you don't get the fiber. You will have to eat the fruit as cut fruit. So that you can take. Let's discuss about oils. Now again, different people have different tastes. In Kerala, they will say, oh, we are used to coconut oil. In Chennai, we use gingerly oil or groundnut oil. In the east and some parts of the north, mustard oil is used. If you go and tell them, no, 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 for diabetes, now you change your oil, they'll hate it. They won't enjoy their food. So again, whichever oil you're using, continue that oil, but use only limited quantities. Don't take huge quantities. Whatever is needed for cooking, that oil, continue the oil that you're taking. Finally, I want to talk about some functional foods or foods which are considered superfoods. Now, there is a lot of hype about this, a lot of uh, attention in the media, newspapers about different things. And is it true or not that things like garlic, turmeric uh, and things like that, ginger, things like that, if you take, that they are good for health? Well, these are food additives and some of them have a positive effect on immunity. They are certainly not bad for diabetes and maybe even good for diabetes, but that is all they are. Don't hype them to say that they are a cure for diabetes. I have seen things saying that you take turmeric and your diabetes will go away. You know, Nothing is so easy in life. I wish it was. Then I will just be making turmeric and giving to all my patients and saying that is enough. Don't come to me, just take turmeric. It is not so easy. So diabetes reversal, diabetes control needs lifelong effort. It needs a lot of attention from you. It needs a lot of discipline, but it is doable. So people all the time talk about, oh, I'll reduce my carbohydrate, my diabetes will go away. For how long will reduce your carbohydrate? They even go to zero carbohydrate, keto diet, all kinds of fancy things they try to reduce weight because the media and so many organizations are telling them, oh, your diabetes will go, your diabetes will go. In fact, there are people who say, don't go to a diabetologist. They'll just keep on giving you medicine. Come to us, we are the saviors. We will get rid of your diabetes, you know, and you won't have work for all the diabetologists will close their clinic. I wish that was true, I will become a nephrologist or I will become a cardiologist. That is what I am dreaming of, that diabetes goes away. In fact, I used to joke and say, I have a diabetes hospital. I used to say one day, my grandson or great-grandson must take people around and say, this is a museum where we used to have a disease called diabetes. That is my dream. That is my dream, ladies and gentlemen. So I am not saying, all of you become diabetic, come to me and I will treat you. I am not saying that. I am saying diabetes must go away. But is it easy? Is it a magic wand like Harry Potter, you know, just uh, you know, waving his wand and diabetes goes away? I wish it was. And if you have such a wand, please tell me. I will also buy it and use it to treat my diabetic patients. So, if you look after your diet, if you exercise regularly, if you take your medicines properly, if you sleep well, and on each of these, I will be making a series of videos, which you will be watching soon. And if you do regular monitoring, looking after your glucose levels, either with a glucometer or with a patch, which will tell you continuous glucose monitoring. And most importantly, keeping in touch with your doctor, because things change in your body. 
because what happens is that today your kidney function may be normal tomorrow heaven forbid your kidney function changes it worsens then the entire treatment will have to be changed so these media people who keep saying and on social media people can don't go to doctors you can google and get your medicine and take it yourself well best of luck to you if you believe in that but there's a danger associated with it all of us didn't study medicine for so many years we can also learn google i can teach my grandson to google better and become a google doctor it's i wish life was so easy it is not so look after yourself my it is my hope and prayer that all of you live up to 100 years without any complication but for that as the main theme of today is on diet i would say diet plays a very important role i hope you enjoyed this video where we talked quite extensively about diet you will find in my channel many other videos related to other aspects of diet about exercise about lifestyle about sleep about do's and don'ts that a person with diabetes should do so i do hope you will watch the other videos in this channel thank you